Sanders for letting us have an opportunity to talk to you about some of uh, the work that's ongoing at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations on rabies. Uh, we don't have all the same international standard setting. We leave that to our OIE colleagues. Uh, but as you'll see, we'll, we work very closely with um, the other international agencies. So I thought I'd start off by telling you a little bit about FAO. Um, we, as I mentioned, this is one of the UN agencies. It was started back in 1945. Uh, we have, we work, all of our work kind of fits under these five strategic objectives. Uh, eliminating hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition. Enabling sustainable development in agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. Reducing rural poverty. Enabling inclusive and efficient agricultural and food systems and increasing the resilience of livelihoods to threats and crises. So I think you can see that rabies can fit into sort of some of these different ones. Um, particularly, a lot of our work falls under um, strategic objective number three, reducing rural poverty, as we've heard um, quite a bit in the last, um, over the day and last night. It's a disease that affects uh, the rural poor in a disproportionate way. But obviously, it also affects hunger, food insecurity. We heard a lot this morning about the um, number of cattle that are also um, coming up with rabies. And, um, and we know that a lot of these different um, countries, there's um, a lot of communities that really rely on uh, their cattle as a food source and a source of income. So the FAO, we have a uh, decentralized system. Um, this represents sort of our headquarters here in Italy. And then all of the red dots represents our, rep our regional offices. And the pink dots are our sub-regional offices. And they've set up this system as a way to try to really uh, work very closely with the member states. We work for our member states based on their needs. Um, and we also have uh, country offices in, in many of our member states. Um, if you go to our website, to, uh, you can just Google FAO country offices. There's some nice um, ability to have these interactive maps that you can pull up and you can zoom in and identify the different, where our country offices, our regional offices and sub-regional offices are. Um, and it's really these offices that are um, working very closely with the ministries, they're implementing field projects, they're advising on policy, and they're the, the, the main points of contact for the countries to be able to express what they need from FAO. And then us at the regions and at the headquarters, we're there to assist as, as we can um, in providing, identifying expertise, backstopping uh, any projects, uh, those types of things, but the, these country offices are, um, are are fingers on the ground, if you will. So one of, we get the question a lot about FAO and why we work with rabies. Sometimes even within FAO, we have this question come up quite frequently. Um, but obviously, we we do care about human health. Um, I'm a veterinary public health officer. Um, specifically, we have a veterinary public health team in our animal health division. Um, so we do care a lot about public health, and we know that this is a major public health issue. But as I mentioned previously, it also affects livestock. It's um, a loss of food source, a loss of income, as well as other animals that people rely on for, um, for farming, for hunting, for guarding. Um, so there's a lot, of, um, a lot of loss that comes with this disease that can really affect people and their reliance on these animals for their livelihoods. And as I mentioned previously, it, it impacts the poor and marginalized communities. We do a lot of work in Asia and Africa where we know that there's um, a lot of endemic human and dog rabies. And we know that there's an economic burden from rabies. Um, in, in this estimate of 8.6 billion US dollars per year, 6% uh, of that is estimated to be livestock losses. Uh, but we know that there's really not a lot of uh, information, good information about um, the disease in livestock, so it's really great seeing all of this data that you're presenting that has those numbers. It's really important um, as well for us to understand not even, not just the dogs, not just the humans, but the livestock and other animals. We're also told by the countries that it's a priority disease. 
Um, so this is, we have a project that's ongoing in Africa. And as part of this project, each of the countries have gone through a zoonotic disease prioritization process. Um, this is the CDC offers a One Health zoonotic disease um, prioritization process, which is a really useful tool for being able to objectively identify what zoonoses should be prioritized within a country. So you come up with a set of criteria and questions and the list of zoonoses, and you rank them uh, in a very objective way. And it involves both human health, animal health, wildlife sectors. Um, and it's a really good way for countries to sort of see where they might, where they should prioritize their resources. So in the, in the 14 countries where this process took place, all 14 countries prioritized rabies in their top set of diseases, even over zoonotic influenza, hemorrhagic fevers, brucellosis, and anthrax. So it's, it's a priority, and we need to listen to the country's needs and, and respond to that. And as mentioned previously, controlling rabies directly contributes to the sustainable development goals, which is what we're all working towards. Um, there's a set of 17 different goals with indicators um, in terms of trying to um, eliminate poverty, hunger, improve health and well-being, and other topics. And so we heard that obviously controlling rabies contributes to sustainable development goal three, but also uh, we would al argue it also helps for uh, sustainable development goals one and two on poverty and hunger. And we know that it takes an intersectoral approach that has been discussed previously today, so I really won't go into that. It involves <laughs> all various sectors and as at the FAO we've um, ha we have a, a formal collaboration as part of the tripartite with the OIE and WHO on having a one health approach um, there's a, a paper that came out in 2010 where it outlines how we agree to work together in a one health approach and it, and it prioritized three topics at that time including rabies antimicrobial resistance and, and, and um, zoonotic influenza viruses. And so we've been working collaborative, collaboratively since then on those topics. And even just this last um, fall, there was an update to this document where we all recommitted to continuing to work together, not just on those diseases, but expanding even to other topics. But again, FAO's uh, committed to, to this uh, effort. So, a little bit about what FAO is doing. So uh, raising awareness is critical at all levels, uh, from the global level to the policymakers down to uh, the people in the communities. And so we do a lot of work on raising awareness. Um, we, you know, produce different types of media. We have, there's been a video produced. Um, this is just a couple of uh, examples on the left that we did it at headquarters. On the right is a, a little uh, graphic that was for um, <coughs> being developed for a campaign that's ongoing in Thailand. And then obviously we're, we've been working uh, with um, awareness raising activities for World Rabies Day um, all the way back to starting in I think 2009. We are um, members of the Partners for Rabies Prevention and have been working on uh, contributing to the work that the group is doing on developing different tools um, on the canine rabies blueprint. Uh, we've also worked quite closely with GARC on the stepwise approach to rabies elimin elimination. Uh, the FAO has a lot of experience with developing progressive control pathways, particularly with foot and mouth disease, as that was the first one, but it's really served as a model for helping to develop these stepwise approaches for other disease agents. And they're starting to, rabies has been the second, but there's now ones for PPR, for uh, trypanosomiasis, and we're working on one for uh, brucellosis that we're um, trying to hopefully finalize in the next year or so. Back in, I think, 2011, we worked with uh, the World Animal Protection and the Instituto, Instituto Zooprophylactico Experimentale, if I said that right, I don't know, um, on dog population management technical consultation. So it involved having an electronic consultation where we invited people to provide their inputs. Um, we got re responses, I think, from 230 people from 70 countries. We invited papers from experts on specific topics. That all kind of led into a meeting um, where this document was generated 
that um, was to identify different options and to give recommendations that are in line with international standards and best practices. So um, that document is available online as a resource. As previously mentioned by uh, Leah, we are working very closely with WHO, OIE, and GARC as the United Against Rabies collaboration to develop the um, global strategic plan to end human deaths from dog-mediated rabies by 2030. Um, so I won't, uh, that will be on the agenda for tomorrow. I won't uh, go into that further, but we are working quite closely with them um, to get this published and then implemented. We're also supporting regional elimination efforts. Uh, this is just an example from Asia where they've developed their own elimination strategy to um, end rabies by 2020. So we're uh, providing support from our regional offices, um, in that case from Bangkok, uh, to support those efforts. Uh, last October, there was um, our, our European office um, held a technical meeting on prevention and control of rabies and wildlife in Eastern Europe. Um, so they discussed different potential options for uh, controlling and eliminating wildlife rabies, as well as ways that the different countries could work together on different topics, such as um, dog population management, wildlife estimation, estimates, improving diagnostics, and others. One thing that FAO has um, worked on is developing a laboratory network in um, Africa, Western Central Africa. And this was started back in 2007 as a way to try to harmonize laboratory and surveillance efforts in this region. Uh, it was originally started for influenza and some of the um, transboundary animal diseases. In 2010, a rabies subnetwork was created. Um, and so this has 23 different countries involved. And so you can see it's kind of small to read, but each of these circles represents um, a laboratory from a different country. Those in green are from Central Africa, and those in the cream colored are from uh, Western Africa. Um, a regional focal point was established for both of those to try to improve the communications between the different laboratories. And then there was a focal point um, at FAO as well as at ISVI. And I would also say that this was done in collaboration with OIE, I think USDA, and AUI bar. Um, and so it's been going on, um, going, it's been a network now for uh, over 10 years. Um, and the, the goal is to share quarterly reports, protocols, meeting updates, um, anything as needed. And there's been training that's been done sort of to each of these that would, in the, in the goal of harmonizing some of the different techniques uh, that are used. We also respond to country requests. Again, we work for our member states, so when we have requests, we try our best to, to help those. So we do a lot with um, assistance for outbreak management. Some examples um, have been in Indonesia, I think in Azerbaijan, in Kenya, and others. Um, through these, we've offered training on different uh, topics, such as dog capture and vaccination. Um, we've helped, um, as an example in Indonesia, to in implement the integrated bite case management that we've um, heard about um, already a couple times today, as well as uh, advice on dog population management. Uh, we work on development of education and awareness materials. Uh, we've worked with GARC on trying to look at materials that could be incorporated into primary and secondary school curricula, and then promoting responsible pet ownership. Um, this represents some of the work that I mentioned previously that we have ongoing now in Africa. So we're, uh, we're planning to implement some different um, stakeholder meetings for different countries um, to help them uh, develop a multi-sectoral action plan for rabies elimination using the SARE, the stepwise approach tool that you'll also hear a lot more about tomorrow. Um, along with that, helping to develop budgets for long-term canine vaccination programs using the CDC's tool on the global dog rabies elimination pathway. Again, you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Um, we just had this first meeting in Guinea, so it's uh, in green, and then the, the countries in orange are planned to happen, I think, in the next few months. Um, but again, just as some examples of some of the activities that um, we have going on. Another thing is on strengthening laboratory diagnostic capacity. So this um, is um, procurement of reagents, equipment, 
consumables and on-site trainings on different diagnostic techniques. Um, this represents, again, some of the green and the orange are our, our Resolab um, countries. Um, we've just had some trainings in uh, Guinea and Liberia um, where they were actually able, like in Li Liberia, they were able to um, actually diagnose cases um, as a result during the training. Um, so it was quite exciting. The, still some countries that will need um, additional support though for diagnostics. So again, this is sort of just an example of some of the work that we're doing. If I was very committed to working on rabies and I would encourage you to, to get in touch with the country and regional um, FAO offices if you can use support from us and if you'd prefer to go through me, I'm also happy to help make those connections if they're not already there, which I imagine for most, you're already very quite familiar for, with the work that's being done uh, in countries, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you.